Welcome back to the Interviewing People CareerCast for highlights from last week's full-length interview with Jared Smith, an aerospace engineer. Jared will be sharing about his path to becoming an engineer and how his co-op experiences contributed to his college experience. So sit back, relax, and know you can always go back to watch our full interview if you'd like to learn more. Enjoy the show. Every school has their own uh, their own name for the program. I think at Purdue, it's aeronautical and astrological. Cincinnati's aerospace. I think at Ohio State, it's aerospace as well. Um, but it's really just a different name for their program. You may take one or two different courses uh, that'll have you lean a certain direction in the industry, but it's it's really all the same. Okay. Just kind of a just kind of every school wants to be a little unique. It kind of changed throughout school. Uh, I think right now I want to work in flight tests. And a company that visited our school, um, one of their representatives said it best. He didn't want to work on parts of planes. He wanted to work on planes. So in in flight tests and integrations testing, which is what I want to do, um, you'll get a new part or a new software from a company, and they'll go put it on a plane and fly it and see how it works that way. So I think that's, that's kind of where I'm leaning. I'd like to, I'd like to work on a whole plane and not just bits and pieces. Yeah. So usually there's, there's a pilot, the the military does this a lot. There's a lot of civilian contractors with the military that do this. Um, if you get, if you get high up enough in the, in the department, you can ride in the plane while they're flying it to take measurements and readings on what you're, what you're testing. But for the most part, you're on the ground observing from there. there's a freshman engineering program, which is just kind of general. You take your gen eds um, and you can kind of pick and choose which discipline of engineering you want to do later on. That's a choice at Cincinnati. I think at Ohio State, that's a mandatory thing. Um, But you have a much higher GPA requirement to get into a program later on than you do uh, if you join initially. Um, And my friend, Tim, who had gone there previously, he, uh, he, did the uh, freshman engineering program and aerospace has the highest GPA requirement to get into at Cincinnati. Um, and so I went to, I had the grades and the ACT score to do aerospace initially. So I did that. They really weren't any different for me. Um, I think honestly, it's a lot. It's a, or it's very similar to how every school has a different name for their aerospace program. Uh, it's just kind of what their company chooses to call you. At Barnes, I was a a full employee, um, full time employee, and at Standard Aero, I worked full time, but I was considered a contractor under their umbrella. Um, so just kind of technicalities. It really wasn't any different in my day to day. I don't even. I don't even know if managerially it was any different for them it's just kind of the label that they put on things for their own purposes the reason it's it's a full year for barnes is because i had two semesters there um but i had a semester of classes in between um so that kind of just the the technicality of having a full year was just the easiest to put on my linkedin um but it's so it's a full semester um full semester of full-time work If you really want to, uh, you can talk to your advisor about it. Uh, You could take classes if you wanted to, but I mean, most people don't because working full time is is enough job, especially when it's the first time you've ever really done a a full time job in in industry. Um, Yeah, I worked worked full time for, I guess, a full semester. So 16 weeks, give or take um, 40 hours a week, didn't take any classes. Uh, I had some friends that took classes. They took one or two online classes. because they were they were shooting for a minor and they wanted to stay on track, uh, but for the most part, nobody I knew took classes. Yeah, so the uh, all three of my co-op rotations were paid. Uh, they were fu- I was a full time employee, um, got paid. I think that is that's probably the biggest difference between co-op and internship 
uh, at least to my understanding. Uh, I know a lot of people that did, that did internships for different programs at Cincinnati, and a lot of them didn't get paid. Everyone I know who did a co-op got paid. I think that's that's your bottom line difference because again, that that expectation from the school and the the companies, it's just that's just a, a fact of their of their life. So my uh, my first co-op at Barnes Aerospace, they repair jet engine parts. They're a repair shop. I did a lot of different things. My first my first semester, I was given one big project. Uh, they were having problems in their shipping department, getting the wrong parts and with the wrong shipping labels. Um, so you may send a company the same part, but it's the wrong one. Uh, even though it's the same object, they they have to know very specifically because it's aircraft components, and you can't. There's not a lot of room for error. <laughs> right. Uh, so I was I was given a, a job to troubleshoot and set up a new uh, a new scanner for the shipping department. I had to schedule meetings with their um, with their local representative for their uh, so that he could come in and if I was unqualified because no one's going to read a 300 page PDF of instructions, um, <laughs> so he could come in and troubleshoot with me and uh, that was my biggest problem for my first semester and second one I because I knew my way around Barnes a little bit better. I was given a little more freedom to kind of like, they didn't put me in one place to do one thing. Um, I was more of a go-to guy. I really didn't know what I was doing every day. When I walked into work, it would just be whatever the engineers I was assigned to had for me. Um, I 3d modeled fixtures to help, uh, to help the operators on the floor, uh, do grinding easier. Um, couple fixtures to help welders do their job a little easier a lot a lot of little things it's kind of hard it's kind of harder to describe because it was so varied day to day right. um, but it was a lot more interesting because i got to get out on the shop floor and talk to talk to the operators who have been working there 20 years and really understand the processes that we did there um, and kind of and get a lot of experience or a little experience about a lot of things right um, and at standard arrow um, more fewer things but more important projects uh i helped develop a wrapping process for thermal spray um, i helped deal i dealt directly with a uh, one of our contractors um, aerospace rules are kind of weird with who gets access to manuals for engines and parts and things um, so we're standard air was another repair shop and we were repairing uh, fan cases for jet engines the contractor that we sent the engines to for a certain process didn't have access to the manual so we would look over the part figure out what was wrong with it send it to them and say hey we need you to do x y and z uh, they would send it back and say well, we can't because of all these reasons but because they didn't have the manual so it was my job to go through the manual find the exact reasons why they could do these things and then give them a really detailed report over over it so they could have their minds at ease and actually do what we needed them to, um, which is very cool because I got to interact directly with another company who I hadn't even heard of before. There was an international company, so dealing with the time change and things was was interesting, but it was it was fun. If you can learn somebody's name, uh, and be on a first name basis with somebody, um, whether it's in a company you want to work for, or if it's just in the industry you want to work for, that's a very, very valuable thing. We went down there, networked, toured, had some dinners with local hiring managers. Um, and I, the one that I really like connected with, I guess, in our events was a guy named Larace. And in my job search, I emailed him almost immediately asked him what his company was doing, if they had any openings for co-ops. And he said, no, but give me your resume and your qualifications and all of your information. And he sent my resume to 25 or so companies down in Huntsville, just on my behalf in his free time. There's been a couple people like that that have maybe not had an opportunity for me themselves, but have been willing to try and find one for me. Um, and I've gotten, I've gotten calls back from, from those people more than I have just put it, pushing applications and trying to get my foot in the door online. Thank you for watching this episode showing highlights of the latest interviewing people career cast with Jared Smith. 
and to make your Mondays better than ever, subscribe so you can hear more career stories from those who are actually doing the work. Thank you for watching, and as always, remember the best part about Mondays is interviewing people.